This is a beautiful sunrise in Browning, Montana. Browning is located in the foothills just east of Glacier National Park. It's the largest community on the Blackfeet Indian Reservation and home to Montana's largest tribe, the Blackfeet. The entrance to Glacier National Park was only a few miles from Browning and we stopped at a fly shop to ask directions to the entrance. Not only did we get directions, but we had a wonderful time meeting and talking with Bob Ahrens, who showed us how to make a fly. Before, he said, no, you were an interesting fellow. No, we were having a debate. As I put it, you're not as dumb as you look, you know. No, I'm, I am as dumb, but I got a lot of common sense. There you go. <laughs> This is putting on your thread, and this is like building a house. This is called the um, putting on the base of your thread onto your hook. So this is like a foundation. So a lot of folks, when they tie flies, the reason their flies fall apart is they don't take the extra wrap here to make it more durable. And then this is a marabou. It's a dark brown marabou, and I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but... Oh yeah, it will. And so this, just to show you the difference, is a brown. Yeah. See, there's yeah, a yeah, distinct yeah. I see the difference. difference. So then, from here, the marabou is just nothing but a fancy name for dyed turkey feather. Now, the fish are discriminating enough to know the difference. They well, prefer one versus another. I always explain it to this way to where I teach people how to fish is do you know the difference between sushi and T-bone steak? Yeah, I do So does the fish because it wants to eat too. <laughs> so they may only have a brain about that big, but yeah. they're smarter than 99% of all fishermen. I was told that if they don't have eyelashes, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> if they have eyelashes, you have to feel sorry for them. Oh, I see that. <laughs> okay, and then this is a copper, obviously. Okay. So what this does is you put it on this way, and then this gives it a distinctive flash. So I put two on one side, and then I lay the two long tails and bring it on this side. Well, oh, that takes skill. Now, is that a standard gadget, or did you kind of place I invented, or? No, I do tying demos all over the country. You know? okay. So, a friend of mine invented it, and um, because it's the only true rotary, and by that, a lot of people's vice will will sit here and rotate, but you have to do it by hand. Mm -hmm. Okay. This will do it by itself. Hmm. So it's the only true rotary. Yeah. yeah. You know, so then, so now that I got on the one flash, so this is what we call the fly of many colors, because now we're going to have to add a couple of different color flash. And this fly, if you guys were here to fish, you guys would be fishing right now. Now, you would not fish this fly in the springtime because what it emulates is not out in the water in the springtime. And this simulates our leeches. Hmm. Okay. Now I've not learned anything about fish vision. Right. They see colors obviously. No sir. No, sir. They don't. No. no. So they're looking at motion? Yes. And tone either black or white, okay. but there's probably a hundred different shades. So browns, like we have here, yeah. turn black, but it's a different shade of black, if that kind of makes sense, in the world of color spectrum, not to the human eye, yeah. but if you were colorblind, it's hard for you to tell the difference between your reds and your oranges. Mm -hmm. Well, fish is basically colorblind, but they can see the different tones well, sometimes I think I'm colorblind, but I, I certainly see that as red and that's orange. Yes. Okay. But that's copper. 
copper, but mm. it's a clean copper, yes. super clean. Yes. Polished. <laughs> yes. And then this is a bronze gold. You see oh, okay. how it's not I bright, see that. bright? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So then we just. So this is putting on the tail. Then I got one more color to go. Now, if you were a fly fisherman in Scotland, let's say, uh -huh. would these fit, fill the bill, or is it different fish? Well, mostly Scotland has uh, brown trout. Okay. So, and some of our stuff works very well there, you know, like our royal wolves, orange stickies, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Traditional flies, in other words, calabatuses. Um, your drakes and stuff. Well, they're around the world, but water temperature dictates it. Okay. So even in Alaska, where everybody goes up there to fish for this and that, well, what a lot of folks don't realize is a lot of the rainbows and grayling still hit the same flies we use here in Montana because we have the same food base in the water. Water temperature dictates what type of insects you have. So the fish supply is still plentiful? For us, because we've learned the lessons from the other states, is we have to protect. So a lot of our fishery is catch and release only. Okay, so no one is uh, poaching or overfishing? Well, to sit, here, to sit here and tell you no one would be a realistic, idealistic mm -hmm. situation, but we all know that you cannot keep a tourist who is ignorant of the laws because they really don't care. Yeah. All they care about is, well, I'm here in Montana, and by God, I'm going to have a We fresh saw day. an example of poaching in the newspaper the other day where uh -huh. someone had <laughs> killed something and decapitated it and chucked the rest of it out the roadside. Right. Now, that's, that's what we call the worst poacher in the world because those guys are horn hunting. And what those guys do is they're not trying to feed a family. Yeah, they're yeah, trying right. to cut the horns off sure. to sell for money. So this is a du dubbing braid, which is my technique. And this is my own mixture of buffalo hair. Looked like buffalo hair there. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I, obviously I added some stuff to it. <laughs> yeah, make it red. Well, it's a reddish brown. So then we add it like this. Okay. And then this makes you a braid. Mm -hmm. And then you just run this up this way. Okay, so now if a customer comes in and buys something like that, what's he going to have to shell out? Three dollars. Oh, my goodness. That's very reasonable for all that labor Absolutely. and skill. Yeah. Well, the foreign flies are almost more expensive today than what I sell my flies for. You do any selling through eBay? You know, my kids keep telling me I have to, you know, or I need well, I to. I just certainly have a bigger audience. Now, you said they'd left the state <clears throat> and had jobs. What are they doing? Uh, they all came back home now, and they're trying to, um, you know, a couple of them are working for the railroad. And, um, some of them, what they do is they live here during the off-season, and then they do, what do you call it? I can't think of the fancy name, but they do those shows, um, like a home and garden show at the malls. Mm -hmm. So they're salesmen, I guess. Mm -hmm. how yeah. They're. Entrepreneurs. Yeah. And they work for different companies, and they go up into Canada. And so what I'm doing here is taking the body out so that it's fluffy. And fluffy is important for us novice fishermen 
because fluffy means that once it's in the water, it will pus pulsate. So if I don't make it fluffy here, then you won't catch fish. Mm -hmm. So then, almost done. So then we're going to have to do it a little more. And then this is just to do the head. When did you start doing this? When I was 10. 10? Yep. So I got and you had it down to a science by the time you were 11. <laughs> Just, well, I've been a commercial fly tire since I was 12. My God. So I was off by a year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, those fingers have been a-walking, as they say. Yep. <clears throat> well, I was figuring... So you did more than pick your nose with your fingers. Oh, yeah. Now, let me ask this. Who taught you? Nobody. You're really self-taught. Yep. Isn't that amazing? Because we went, we lived far enough out in the country, how I actually learned to tie flies is I would go into uh, Great Falls and buy a fly. Because <coughs> back then we only had X number of flies. Mm -hmm. and uh, Take it apart and see what they apart. had done. Yep. And wow. then our chickens out there got to where whenever I came out with a pair of scissors, they would run. <laughs> because I wouldn't kill them, but I had to have their feathers. <laughs> we saw some low, down here, this low, roofs, and Dean says, what do you think those are? I, said, I don't know, maybe they're a hiding place for a dog or something. Just down the road. It's a hen house? <laughs> Very no, low. They're, it, I, I they're six have. inches off the ground. Well, it could just be that the slanted wind, roof. Yeah, but it could be the wind just took it off the building because okay. we had that hundred mile an hour wind. Wow. Okay. When that happens <laughs> in this part of the world, so I mean, it, you, you guys on the coast call them it, there. It deroofed. It, it could be. Yeah. Know? Well, it entered my mind actually, but I said no. But in your guys' part too of, neat. <laughs> of the world, you guys call them a hurricane. Out here, we just call it a high wind. Yeah. Hey, let me not tell you. Now you do it. Now this is this is head cement, and because I know I'm not perfect, I just sit there and put it on. See how it goes on the thread. Yeah. And what it does is it gives it a coating. Now is that like a dope or something? Or? It's a glue basically. Mm -hmm. But what it does is acts as a glue, yes, but it's also a preserver. Mm -hmm. So what it does is it'll help keep everything together for you. Now, these are one-timers. that You use it and that's it? No. You can reuse them? Yes. You have to clean them nice or what do you do? Only if you use them in salt water. Okay. So all you do if you use it in salt water is that when you're done you got to take them in and wash them off with fresh water. Okay. But the hardest thing for to explain to folks is in the world of fly fishing, fishing, mm -hmm. okay, these hooks are made to dissolve if they're in water for too long. So now what what's you, too long mean? Like two days. Okay. So what they are is that you have to make sure that you wash off all of the stuff and then dry it out good. Okay. So a lot of us will have a drying rack like this mm -hmm. to where you can dry out, yeah. okay. you know, so you wash off four or five. But as long as you're in fresh water, that's not an issue. It's just when you go salt water okay. fishing. The reason they did that is, let's say I hooked this fish and I lost the fly in its mouth. A lot of these hooks will dissolve in less than an hour mm. inside of the fish. Okay. And usually it stays in the mouth cavity. Doesn't yes. go lower than that. No. A lot of times it, when those situations happens, what we have found is that we take the fish cut the line as close to his mouth as possible and leave it alone. When we were y younger and ignorant, man, we used to go in there and do a tonsillectomy. We would end up killing the fish, but in our trying to help the fish survive, because what everyone forget, we were the generation of catch and release. So we had to learn by trial and error. So in our intent of trying to help, we well, were Well, you weren't them. torturing them deliberately. It's no. a short answer. Well, it's no different than the doctor. Well, the bush the apparently as a young kid would put mm -hmm. a firecracker up a frog's ass and blow it up. Yeah, he, but he who got, wouldn't? 
All <laughs> rednecks do that. <laughs> That's the same thing as putting the mouse on a board and then letting it go out and pulling it off and having a pipe come for it. <laughs> oh my God. And this is yours. Oh, you kind. Thank you yeah, very, I'll very get much. A cup for you. As Isn't we would that call amazing? It a silvenir. Yeah. Not a souvenir, a silvenir. Meeting Bob, who so generously showed us the skill it takes to make a fly is an experience we'll never forget. We brought the fly home and hung it on our Christmas tree. Every year we hope to do the same and we'll certainly remember this experience. If you're interested in fishing and need a fly, there's no better place to get them than Bob's Fly Shop. The information to get in touch is given here.